Okay, again, we're working with Blender 2.78a at the time of recording this, and this is a video that's going to be basically like our last video. Well, trying to accomplish the same thing, but instead of using the internal renderer, we're going to use the cycles renderer. You might ask, what's the difference between the two? And a very simplified, quick uh, explanation is Blender renderer, the internal renderer, uh, renders stuff, and it, it does a pretty good job. Uh, but cycles renderer, if you're going forth, realism in your uh, photorealism in your your projects cycles is a bit more accurate for example blender internal renderer can make glass looking objects but they're not true to how glass is supposed to look where with cycles if you know what you're doing you can put in the the options the settings to make a glass thing look like glass is truly supposed to look in that situation but it is a much slower renderer when it's doing that sort of thing so anyway we went over this in the Blender renderer. Now let's go ahead up here, choose Cycles renderer. And this is going to be a very simple example. Obviously you can tweak this a lot. Let's go ahead and with our default cube, G, Z, one to move it up and spacebar, plane, add plane, S to scale it and 10, enter to scale that up. We'll hit F12. This is what it looks like already. And already you can see even without our glow effect, this is uh, rendering quite a bit slower than the Blender internal renderer. And again, it's all depending on what your goal for your project is. Um, so this is at half resolution, half 1080p, and it took, well, it says 21 seconds to render that and we haven't even done our effects yet. Where the internal renderer, let's just real quick here, go back to our Blender renderer and hit F12. It took a half a second. So, but you can see it looks very different. So let's go back to our cycles renderer. And in here, I'm going to delete our sun lamp and I'm going to go to our world and I'm going to make that black. Now I'm going to choose my cube and give it a material. I'm going to say use node and from diffused, I'm going to choose emission. I'm going to give it a color. And in this case, we'll do a red color because that's what we did in the last video. I'll hit F12 here and you can see we now have a glowing cube. And it's that simple. But again, if you compare the two, I personally think this one looks a little better than the uh, Blender render. Let's see, I think if I switch this back, it's not going to retain all the settings. Yeah, it's, I would have to go through setting that up. Um, but you notice that took 16 seconds where I think we said at half resolution, it was taking just under a second with the Blender renderer. So you have to gauge what is your project. If you're working with still images and you're going for our video with, you want photorealism, cycles is a pretty good way to go. Uh, but if you're just trying to get the effect out, especially if you're doing video where you're trying to render out 30 frames a second, and you can also, I don't have uh, hardware rendering enabled, which I guess would speed this up. I haven't really experimented with that. Um, but just keep in mind, but I wanted to show you both ways of doing this. So same thing, just like in the other video, I can shift D to clone this and under materials, I'm going to say new material and I'm going to change this to a blue color and hit F12. And now you can see again, the lights are mixing. So we have that. So that is how you make a glowing object in Blender using cycles. Again, um, depending on your project, uh, one might be better than the other, but we have 15 seconds compared to, and again, that's at half resolution. Let's put this up to full 1080p and render it out. See how long it takes. There are going to be projects where it makes a big difference. That's basically what I'm trying to state here. And I probably said a couple times, you're probably saying, shut up, Chris, we get it. What you're working on depends on what render you're using. I am much more familiar with the Blender internal renderer because I very rarely go for photorealism in the stuff I'm working on. I'm making titles for videos where I just have text going across the screen. I don't care if it looks like it's real text or not. Um, and it saves a bunch of time using the internal renderer. And again, there are tweaks you can do on both. You can use tweaks in the internal renderer to make it look better. And really you can make stuff that looks photorealistic in the internal renderer. I'm not saying you can't do that. Uh, but the thing is, it may look photorealistic, but is it true to what it actually is supposed to look like when it's doing the math 
of uh, the renderers doing the math on the reflections, does it just look real or is it accurate to what realism actually really is? Uh, and the cycle supposedly is true to real life. But that is it. And this is just a, a introduction video because we are going to go over um, making a Tron Glow, which is basically taking this beveling edges and putting these effects on those. But we have videos coming up on that, so thank you for watching, and as always, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you visit my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description. Uh, also check out patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. There's a link to that in the description as well. There you can support me on a monthly basis for as little as a dollar a month if you'd like my videos. It means a lot to me. And uh, if you can't do that, be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment. That stuff helps out as well. If you want to give it one-time support, check out, again, filmsidechris.com. Link in the description. There's a place there where you can uh, send me a PayPal payment. I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.